So we took it from all sides. Um, but we were extremely lucky. That day, 10 people died, 22 was wounded. Um, we were lucky. We were protecting people from terrorist elements in a non-offensive matter. Families were taken out completely. I think over 30 Iraqis around the hotel died because of the blast of the bomb. So that was my welcome to Baghdad. Tonight I am at the Reimsach Country Club for 2018's first Raki Story Evening combined with the release of Johan Roth's recent book Blood Money. A book giving insight on how South African military contractors landed in the sandbox and simply had to adapt. Join me as these gentlemen take us on a journey of their lives. You, what was the deciding factor for you in order to join Special Forces or the Army? Um, the deciding factor for me was uh, my great-grandfather's influence. He was my role model and uh, um, he was always a gentleman as well. Um, he always looked after my great-grandmother so well. Um, the war stories on his lap and uh, the war stories I heard from my father's friends in the Barabats, I think that sealed my fate. And how would you tell the viewers why should they, or what would they find interesting about the book Blood Money? Um, I think Johan's perspective on Iraq is quite accurate. Um, um, uh, he's been in, in, in private military contracting for such a long time, he's got so much experience in that, and I think his experience comes through in the book. Uh, so you actually get a quite uh, a, a good value for, for the money that you spend on the book. Uh, I think the book is cheap. It's also the stories that's in there. Um, I think you learn about you learn the other side of private military contractors as well. That they they're not those animals or those weirdos that you that you see in the media because uh, the media can be very that's misleading. <laughs> yeah. ask you what were the deciding factors of you joining Space of Forces? I always wanted to do it from a young age. As a teenager already I was very interested in the military and my dad had a Special Forces friend, an old god Reiki, and I used to listen to his stories and I decided when they called me up to apply to go and uh, try and do the selection and I was successful so um, I, it's something I wanted to do from a very early age, from about 10, 11, as far as I can remember. So yeah, it worked out for me. Luckily I made it and I passed the selection and the training and that set me on the way to bigger things after my career in the military. Um, but I'm very grateful that I could do it. And how have you implemented the lessons that you've learned um, during your course as an operator in your personal life or mindset? Yes, it, uh, you learn how to endure hardship for starters, um, you know, you learn how to work in a team, you know, you learn how to improvise, um, making something out of nothing, you, you, you learn hardship and you learn difficult circumstances and that prepared me very well for my work after the Rekis or after Special Forces, um, especially in Iraq, places like Iraq and a few other places we've worked in that you know, it's difficult environments and our training, we always fall back on our training and I could see also that the guys that was in Special Forces really excelled in these um, different uh, difficult circumstances because of their training. So I'm very grateful that I could do it, that I've learned a lot and uh, that was the, the, the basics and the foundation of everything we did came from our Special Forces training. Now there is a common misperception that, sh that soldiers who go um, abroad um, are mercenaries. What in your opinion, how would you define a private military contract contractor? I think Johan said it very well tonight um, when he talked about it and uh, said the one is an is a offensive uh, 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 approach 
and the one is a defensive approach. Uh, um, a, a private military contractor is a person that protects people. Um, all the odds are against you, um, whereas uh, where are you, if you're a mercenary, all the odds are for you. You plan the attacks. Uh, where are you, if, if you're a private military contractor, the attacks get planned against you. So you just move the goods or move the people to a safe area and you get attacked along the way. So you just defend them to get them there. And then one last question I have to ask you, I suppose it can be taken as ignorant, but do you ever take a moment to think, you know, through all the direct conflicts that you've kind of survived, do you ever think by yourself, you know, like, why did I survive or how, yes. you know? Yeah, that, that question I've molded in my head, you know, from, from a young age, even from my, my Special Forces days, because I was also very lucky in Special Forces with an incident. Um, and I guess there is purpose for one. Um, I'm just grateful to my Creator um, that I survived it all. And I think there is a purpose for me. I would like to get involved with charities to help people from war zones where I've worked and specifically Iraq. There are guys that got injured that, that haven't got enough money for medical treatments and so on. And then, you know, if I somehow can start a foundation and help them and also help kids from the war that are left behind in Iraq, I would like to give back because the country was good to me. So I, I've got an idea of, of looking into charity work, but related to my work. Um, guys that got injured and kids that was left behind there. Guys, that is unfortunately all I have for this episode of Ronin's Rendezvous. Tonight's episode was worth a thousand words, but to get the full 25,000 words, be sure to buy your own copy of Blood Money from a bookstore nationwide or from the website below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for future entertainment and see you on the next one.